Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. We are continuing our epic adventure on the Seventh Continent. So far, we have Elliot Pendleton and Mary Kingsley attempting to remove the voracious goddess curse. We've learned quite a bit, as found in our satchel. We've managed to grab a metal gear wheel, a few experience points, and we've also learned about our juvenile rockworm and red seaweed. If you missed any of that, please check back in my other videos. Also, we've crafted a few items. We've got a club that Mary Kingsley has, and she had just recently made a woven cord. Elliot Pendleton managed to find a life jacket and crafted a rope just recently. So far, this is how far we've managed to uncover the, uh, the seventh continent. I'm excited to keep going. I hope you are too. If you want to see how these survivors handle the rest of the challenges, then you have to... Meet me at the table. Here are our brave adventurers. This card is a little blurry. I just want to remind you what it was. It was just that one that allows us to rest or heal if we wanted to. And that was kind of the last thing we did with Mary Kingsley. She came down here and got rid of her tired state. We're probably going to go over here next. There are other options to go up here. But this is right next door. It is going to cost two to move off this tile because of the two card down here. So we're actually going to have, well, Mary Kingsley. She always seems to be the most adventurous of the two. She's going this way. All right, what did you find? A spiky conch. It says, you have picked up a large shell you can blow into. All right, it helps with music, and we can discard this to beat some, something or somebody with it. It does have three durability, and it does say to go to the next thing. Its keywords are music and aggressiveness. So, you know, if I wanted to, I could add this to the club because this is also aggressiveness. And believe it or not, I think I'm going to because I can then add their two durabilities. They're both three. I'm going to add that to six. So I'm going to set the card down like this, and I am going to... Put a six on it. Ta-da! Right there. So if I ever want to use it for music, I can. But I don't think I'd ever really use it for fighting. I might as well just keep using this club. But it gives me six swings with my club. is isn't too bad. I should be able to take something out with six swings. It did show that I can grab the next green card, which is going to be the number six. Right here. Six-o. Our number six card says, there is no smoke here. Some moss and even a few bamboo like canes grow in this area. So let's look at our card. All right, it's gonna cost us two to move off this one as well. Okay, um, well this one has bamboo. Well, as seen right here with the bamboo. That's, what is that? Oh my, okay, here's the deal. This thing's awesome. Okay, I love having a camera that can see these things. This is a number on the card. This means that you, if you think you're right, I'm gonna show you how this works. This is gonna be really cool. We're gonna finish this card first. I can do a spot check action here if I want to, or spot observe to see number 12, it costs one. Also, this connects there and above. And it's got this pattern here, which is, okay. Um, okay, more, ex <laughs> more excitingly, this right here, you can then if you think this, the number, well, I think the number is 14. I don't know what you think, but I can't see it being any other number. If you think that is the number 14, you can go to the, okay, I'm going to slide the boxes in. Normally, I don't, I'm not going to slide the boxes anymore. I'm just going to pull the cards and just that way I can edit that stuff out and make this a lot faster. So if you think, which I do, this is the number 14, I can go into this box and look for the number 14. It's right here. Now, if I think it's right, what's the number of this one? Is number six. I'm gonna pull this out 
and on the bottom, there it is. The number six is on the bottom of this card. So that's telling you, yes, you're right. You found the card that links to this one. So that is so cool. All right, so 14 is here. I think it's this one. It is 14, it's the number six. So again, it says, uh, and it's got new text. It says, you frighten a little crab and it scurries into a small hole hidden away among the weeds. So we turn it over and we look at this one now. Um, okay, let's compare it. The twos are still the same, the 12 is still the same, still got bamboo, four, nine, and okay, the only difference is the fact the 14 up here has been replaced with a, with a free action, I like free actions, um, right here. So we're gonna put that here. I'm gonna move that box off. I believe that means I banish this, or maybe I'll put it in the past. I think I banished this card, so we're gonna banish it. I'm then gonna move this box back over here and we're gonna continue our adventure. So now to move over that tile, we do have to draw two cards if we want to, but <laughs> there's no way I'm not moving over there. Oh, that was awesome. Okay, I hope they have a lot more of those because that was really cool how that works. Okay, we're gonna have, well, Mary Kingsley was the one that initiated that, so she's gonna move over there. We're gonna draw two cards from our action deck. We got, oh, one of those remember cards. Those are awesome. So we're gonna put that one maybe, what's this? Itchthologist, I, I'm gonna say that wrong. You may take one additional 200 card or two additional 300 cards. The active player chooses. Even if the action is a failure, discard this. Okay, I'm gonna discard this one because I haven't even come to anything that allows me to do that. So maybe we'll bring that back into play at some other point. So we're gonna keep remember because she does still have room for one more blue one and then she does have that one green one. So now that we're over on this tile, I am going to go see the magic place we found. And that's card number 16. All right, there's two 16, the green and a gold. So we start with the green one and we'll see what it says. There is something in there. Following the scampering crab, you notice a gleam at the entrance to the hole. You crouch down and reach into the hole to take the object. And it says, oh, it's a metal, it's another Metal Gear wheel. I wonder if it's the same kind. No, it's a different looking one. Our other one looks like that. And this one says a small Metal Gear wheel found in the lair of a crab. And it's gonna go in our satchel just like the other one. There's a different symbol down there too. Maybe these do, all right, so those must do different things. So put that in our satchel. And then there was that gold one again. So I'm gonna look in there again and see what it says now. Now it says you insert your arm into the hole again, but find nothing worthwhile. Okay, so there was that one gear wheel, that's cool. And this says, what does it say? You notice that the ground around the tunnel is loose and crumbling. You could easily dig it out and hide in there. Okay. Um, oh, so if you ever wanna do this action, which is hunt, oh, it'll help us hunt. Well, that's not bad. Maybe we'll get some, some monsters to beat with a club. And we're gonna put that right here. So I'm gonna move his jacket. And we're gonna put that right there. So we found a little hiding spot. Not bad, and a gear wheel. Don't forget the gear wheel. Happiness. Um, let's see, what else do we got? We've got this 12, we might as well take a look. Before we go too much farther, let's take a look. Oh, wow, check this out. Okay, we're pretty excited about this. Remember that splint that I picked up a while ago? Well, if you notice, the resources for it are bamboo and vine. Well, on this card is bamboo, and because of that seaweed card we had found, learned about up in the northern area, it allows all these to become vines. So we've got the vine down here. So we can make this for free. I am a huge fan of free. I don't know about you guys, but I like free. Now that does make it so there's only, uh, I'm gonna run out of cards I can craft together. So, huh, do I wanna make this now or do I wanna wait? After a long and hard, thoughtful process, I have decided that, yes, we're gonna craft this. Why not, it's free, and besides, you can't go wrong with free. So we're gonna put that over here. She now does have three items crafted 
She has the woven cord, woven cord, I apologize, the splint, and then she has that club with that conch shell under it. So she's got three items created. She cannot make any more items, but she can add to these if she wants. With that being said, she's then going to do this number 12 action here, and we're gonna see what that is. To do that action, we have to pull one card. So we're gonna pull it. It is a camouflage outfit. Leaf and vine. Well, I, since I just made the splint, I do have room to just put this in, but I can draw three less when hunting, or I can do a be stealthy or hide action better. Okay, well, we'll put it in our hand, who knows? Who knows, who knows. Now we'll draw our number 12 card. So again, there's two number 12s, a green and a gold. So we have to take the green card first. And it says, from the few tracks you spot on the ground, it seems that a small animal was recently here. Turn it over. What is this? You hide and wait in silence. So this is a locked action. I'm only allowed to take two cards and I have to get two or more successes. Depending on the number of successes you obtain, take the corresponding number of 30 cards. If I get two or three, I get one, four or six, I get two, and seven plus, I get three. Reveal them. If at least one involved character is bloody, you must discard one of these cards without the keyword predator. Choose one of the remaining cards which represents the result of your hunt. A hunt, all right, sounds good. Return the other cards, and then I replace this green one with the gold one. Okay, interesting. Now sadly, I don't have anything that helps with hunting, except for this. So I do get one star, thanks to this little hole I made to hide in. But I don't have any items that are going to help me with hunting except for this camouflage outfit. Uh, but that just lets me draw less cards. I don't want to draw less cards. So I guess, now I could leave this here and we could come back and hunt at a different time because it's not a red, it doesn't have a red, it's not outlined in, the action isn't outlined in red, which means you have to do it immediately. It just has the locked icon. But Elliot Pendleton also doesn't have anything that would help him with hunting. So we're just gonna give it a shot. We're gonna go hunting. Let's hope this works. All the curse cards are over there. We already know that. So I'm not worried about curse cards. And we've got one success automatically. So I'm only allowed to take two cards. So I take two cards and we get one success. We've got two already. And please, please. Okay, that's not bad. We got one, two, three successes. Oh, it would have been better if we had four. Sadness. Ah. What can you do? Here we go. I get one 30 card. That's it. One, two, three. Yeah, that's it. Hmm. Well, at least we got one. One's better than zero, right? All right. And then we replace this with a gold one. We're going to do that. First, we're going to figure out what should we keep here? Well, this learn by doing. I still haven't found a reason for that one. So into the discard pile you go. I guess we're going to keep knowledge is power. You get more experienced. Take one zero three card. For each other knowledge's power card in the hands of involved characters, take one additional 03 card, discard this. So it is a locked one, though you only get one shot at it. I'm going to get rid of this too because she actually is full up over there. Well, that camouflaged outfit, really? I, I'm not stealthy. We're going to get rid of this. And we're going to put that there. We are going to keep knowledge's power. Experience is experience. Maybe we'll get more of those and then we can use it. Back to this card. We must take one 30 card because we got three successes. Okay, there are three, three 30 cards. I guess that makes sense because this does say that if you get seven plus stars, you get three, so you get all of them. All right, we mix them up a little bit here and we're gonna take this one. It says, stone eating crab. You spot a kind of large gray and red crab with short flat pincers that do not really look like a threat. Take two zero one cards. All right, sounds like a plan to me. I'm gonna put that right there. Two zero one cards. Oh, these are meat. I like meat. Rem let's see what it says. Randomly take three cards, six, six if you have fire. Okay, that's sweet. 
We do have a way of making fire with this card, so we're going to be doing that. Um, from the discard pile and shuffle them back into the action desk, then return this, so it goes back to the box. And they're all the same, these little cards. Okay, so we have two of these, so I can combine these because they're food stamina. But she does not have a stamina card out here. I hope I do this right. I if I'm cheating, then then that sucks for me. But I think I can just say, you know what? I'm done with Splint. You're out of here. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Well, maybe I would want to be ya sometime. And I can put and I can replace that in my group of stuff with these meat. So I got two meat. Like I said, if I did that wrong, please tell me. But I think I you can dismantle stuff whenever you want. If you can't, then I apologize for doing something completely wrong and hopefully not breaking the game. Then it says to replace this with this green 12 card with no writing or no nothing written on the back. It says, apparently there is not much more food in this desolate land than you have already found. You realize you had better ration what you have if you want to make it through. Oof. Immediately after this is revealed, one involved character may discard two cards from their hand in order to choose one card in the discard pile and add it to their hand. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to go through the discard pile and just see if that's something I want to do. Okay, I've decided not to do that. We're going to let that go, and we're going to continue on. And it's going to be Mary Kingsley again, I think, moving, because if I can get her up here... That means he can just travel this whole distance to her just with one draw of a card because it costs two to move off. It would be negative one for their little banding together thing. So she's going to move up, which then makes her take two cards. Wow, that deck is getting small. I've got to make fire and get food here. We've got maximize the odds. Discard this. One involved character may choose up two cards from their hand and put them back on top of their action deck. We've seen that one. A walking stick. Well, this could be good. Okay. Oh, I draw two less cards if I want to do a move action or a fight action. That's really good because I'm just draining cards just walking around this thing. Let's keep that. Let's keep that a lot. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this knowledge is power card. If I want it, I can always come back with that remember card. That remember card is really cool. I like that idea. I can always grab something back. Now that she's up there, she's going to look at this card really quick and see what's here. Repentance. We have to do this immediately. It says a caterpillar crawls towards a hole in the ground unaware that jets of boiling hot steam are about to spurt from it. The active player must perform one of the following actions alone. You gently pick up the caterpillar and place it back down away from the danger. That would be the humane thing to do. Natural selection. Uh, I want to get a 0-3 and banish this. And this one says 0-3 and you may choose one card of the cure's aggressiveness in the discard pile and add it to your hand. I think we're going to do the humane thing, which is probably eventually going to be the downfall of me is always doing the humane thing. And I'm going to get a 0-3 and then banish this. So we're going to banish it. And the little symbol up here means I do go on the next tile or the next card is revealed. So we're going to banish that. I grab a 0-3 that says, A memory from your previous expedition comes to mind. Jimmy, the military demolitionist specialist, kept repeating, If a stupid rock is stopping you, y'all get rid of it faster with dynamite than a pickaxe. Experience point tip, sometimes it is wise to postpone an action until you have the appropriate equipment. You know, that's what I was thinking down here when we did that hunting action. I thought maybe I should wait till I had something to help, but I, I didn't listen to Jimmy here apparently and just did it. So I do get the experience point. And the 15 card says, the terrain is split in two by a small bay. It says the waves break and crash loudly against the jagged rocks. Getting to the other side is not going to be an easy task. So it's start okay, number nine is over there, which is where we are. And it you have to do a balance or jump action. 
And it says, put a 17 or a 9 card into play in the space shown, unless it's already there. Okay. So if you have both sides already there, you don't have to do that. Uh, then it says, each involved character moves their figure onto it. If you fail, you are exhausted and decide to turn back before the waves smash you into the rocks. Each involved character takes a 101 card. Well, from before, the 101 card we know is that tired action. So we're going to put that down. And I think now's a good time to get everybody together. But before we do that, no, I lied. We're going to get us all together. Elliot Pendleton is going to move up this way. He's going to leave this card to come join Mary Kingsley. And Elliot Pendleton, he has that if you move onto a terrain card where there is an explorer or a fire figure, I move at negative one card draw. This is a two, so instead it's going to be a one to move up to here. So we draw one. It's another one of those forewarned is forearmed. All right, you may discard this during the results of an action you're involved in in order to apply the following effect. But that's that triple star one. Oh, I wish I could have used that for an action. Like, man, I don't know, maybe jumping. That would have been good. But we're going to keep it anyway, right over here at the rest of our stuff. Yeehaw, Elliot Pendleton. All right, we're all together. Mary Kingsley is going to create her fire. It says that she has to draw two cards to put a fire figure into play on your train card. So when she does this fire action, I wonder if I have anything that can help her. Oh, I do. Okay, let's see here. So these two are going to work together. I hope I do this right. She's gonna use this woven cord. This right here allows me to help with a fire action. So she's gonna do a fire action. I'm gonna use item. The item I'm going to use is this rope to add negative one and some stars. I'm just going for the negative one. So we're going to tick this down to three. So we got three uses left on our rope. I dropped the two to a one, but now I do need a star. You know, it's okay. So I only have to draw one card, but I do need a star now. If I'm doing this right, I believe this is how it works. So I do still have to draw a card. I did get a star. Examine the notes. Oh, that's another one that examined the note cards. Hey, it goes in a good place for that is over here. Okay, that's a what we call right in the discard you go. We get to put a fire token down on this map tile right there. The woven cord then says discard this. I apologize, hit the camera. So discard this. Now comes the fun part. I've got my two meat and it says randomly take three cards, six if you have the fire resource. So remember that Experience point we learned? Ha, huh, it came and actually worked. Eating cooked food enables you to regain even more cards. Ha, huh, what do you know? They were right. So I'm gonna eat both of these. I don't have to do anything. I don't need any stars. To get 12 cards back from my discard pile into my action deck, and then it says return this. So I'm gonna return these. So it says randomly, so I shuffle this all up. Hopefully no curse cards go back in there. Probably could have done this all off camera. You don't need to see me shuffling. We get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. These all go back over here. And these get mixed into here. Okay, that action is done. We've made our fire, we ate our food, we're all happy. Life is glorious. I still love the way all this, look at how this, this all matches up as part of actual things and even the stuff around it that we could do all match up perfectly together. That's really cool how this all works out. All right, with that being said, we've got to cross this. So we need to draw three and get one action, one thing, but we're going to do this together. So we're going to both go through this and doing that lowers the card count raises the amount of stars. So we lower it to two, but we do need two stars. So two for two, I don't know, that might be a little tricky. We'll give it a shot, we'll see what happens here. I don't have anything that helps with jump or anything. So we get two cards, one and a half, oh, our woven cord comes back. Boom, we did it, yes. All right, we got our knowledge is power and woven cord. Well, I kinda wanna keep the woven cord. That really seemed to help us out a lot. Um, we, the knowledge is power, 
experience is great, but I really haven't even found a reason to have those yet. We're going to keep the woven cord and hopefully we'll be able to craft it almost immediately here. So to do that, I am going to actually pull the, I can also take stuff from him because we did it together. So he is going to keep the woven cord and he's going to ditch his bandages to keep the woven cord. Perfect. 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 I say put a 17 card into play on this side. Seventeen says a thirty foot long submarine is hanging from two cranes, keeping it above the surface of the water. There's not a soul in sight. All right, let's see. Ooh, there's that sub. Okay, it doesn't show any. Oh, the only I was gonna say it doesn't show how to get off this card, but the only way to get off the card is to go through that again. All right, zero to look. I'm gonna guess this is looking at the sub. This I don't know what that is up there. Maybe it's to look at whatever. Was that a pineapple? Pineapple tree. Um, we can do a prey action, I'm guessing, or like a religious action or something. Prey. It is a prey action. That made sense. I'm guessing those are tombstones or crosses or something. Okay. This goes down right here. I know we're getting really close to the end of this thing here, um, and that's really not in view. I'm going to shift this camera a little bit and get a better view. There, I did some shifting. Didn't really look like I shifted too much. Now, both of them do go over here. Now, this is where it gets a little different. Remember, I said that you could, so let's say Elliot Pendleton was there and Mary Kingsley did make it across over here. I could not use that action that gets you connected because there is a card in between that where you have to do an action to match up. So if that makes sense. Otherwise, normally they can be on any card and as long as you can make a straight path to them, that uh, this that one action this action applies. Being the adventurer, Mary Kingsley, I think, is going to come down here and do the prey action. Let's see what we find. I got another knowledge is power card. Well, that. It goes to show you there's a lot of these. That's good. I just haven't been keeping them because I've been holding on to this remember card, a walking stick, and a torch over there. You never know. It does say to pull a 39 card. I'm going to guess it's going to go down here, so I'm going to move that. Our 39 card says, you come across two marked graves, very likely the crew of the submarine. The ground here is very rocky, and whoever tried to bury them here appears to have attempted to dig a proper grave before giving up and covering the bodies with stone in the form of Karnis. All right, here we go. Oh, it's got rock and tree. It says, you meditate for a while, pondering the demise of the deceased while hoping to avoid their fate. Immediately after this is resolved, take a 666 card, and after resolving it, apply the following effect. For each curse card in the discard pile oh crap randomly take two cards from the discard pile oh that'd be good i hope they're all in there and shuffle them back into the action deck oh i hope all our curse cards are in there just like they were before i ate the food and maybe they went back in there first take a 666 card last time i checked that number usually isn't a good thing there are three 666 cards, so we're just going to take one at random, kind of shuffle them up a little bit, and, and boom. What's it say? It says, luckily, the veil quickly vanishes. Your instincts tell you that you have been lucky this time. Whew. You know, I get lucky quite a bit in this game, I'm, and now I just totally made myself unlucky. All right, and, and that's it. This is just a temporary event, and it goes right in the past, and I'll put these back in the box. With that done, we need to go through the discard pile and for each curse, randomly take two and put them in the discard in the action deck. Oh, I see one curse in there already. All right, we've got one, two, come on, keep going, keep going. Oh, we shuffled three of them back in. Okay, so we get to shuffle, randomly put in four cards then. So I'm going to shuffle the randomly put four in there off camera. So just to show you, I am so excited to be playing this game. 
I need to start looking at my cards better. So here is a fire token. Mary Kingsley for one card could have made a torch and I totally failed it because there's fire there and there's that seaweed there. All I needed was the wood. It wasn't there. I would only had to take one to make this torch fail. All right. So we're going to line this up with the prey action right here. And I've got the resources, wood and stone. So I can still make this. There's no seaweed on the card, so it would cost me one. But one thing we're going to make is this, because I'm not going to screw this up. This is free, because it takes two wood to make, and wood is on our card now. So we're going to put this over here. It's a will keyword. I don't have any will items, so we're just going to put our four durability onto that walking stick. Now it makes me sad that I didn't do that, but I'm not building this for three. We're just going to go ahead and have Mary Kingsley keep it. And I'm not making the woven cord for one. We're going to hold on to that. Maybe somewhere down the line I can find a place to do it better. Okay, I lied. We're going to make this. It's going to cost us one, but it's a skill card. And our rope is also a skill, so I can at least put them together, add them together, and I can make it back up to four because it was at three after using it to help build the fire. So we're going to do that. So we're going to add those together. It goes to four. Just like that. And we're going to pay our one card, which is knowledge is power. All right, we'll put it right there. And that is all we've got to craft. Mary Kingsley is then going to go up here. I know she's like our big adventurer. He just kind of hangs out. I think he's just kind of tagging along. And he, she's going to spend one card. She got a fire making kit and it takes wood. You know, I might make this. It's only going to cost one, but you know, a fire making kit, that's not bad. But we already have the woven cord out here that makes fire too. I think we're going to, we'll, we'll hold on to it. We'll see. Maybe if we can make it for free somewhere down the line, rock and roll. Otherwise, just going to go with that. Okay. Let's look at 164. 164. You gaze upon the wide, endless ocean. The surf is rough and choppy, and the salt spray from the waves is enough to tell you that the water is freezing. You know, that sounded very similar to over here. <laughs> look at that, 11. And I have to draw seven cards. Okay, this action means that everybody has to be present to do it. So I could do this. I'll read it what it says here. It says, swimming away will certainly not be easy. On the other hand, if you stay here for more than a few days, you will likely die. It says that if you do actually manage to somehow get 11 stars, it's probably going to mean I have to pull that whole deck over there. It says, the strong current carries you as far carries you far to the north each character takes a 102 card which is usually i'm guessing not no the 101 card that's the one that makes you tired unless at least one character used a card with the keyword craft from the inventory return all cards on the board and in the past and put a 43 card into play each player places their figure on it well this might actually have to be the way we go all right it says if you fail, it says despite all your efforts, the strong current forcefully sweeps you back into the islet. Each character takes a 101 card. Return all the cards on the board to the past and put an 09 card into play. Each player places their figure on it. Oh boy, that's, oh, that's kind of scary. All right, it's going to go right here. Oh, Mary Kingsley went for a ride. There we go. Back on the card she goes. All right, so that is a way off this because I think that's it this is looks like one that's it that's the I think it looks like an island from what I see here there is one more spot let's go over here let's look at the sub oh come on sub all right it says you spot a Philly cheesesteak no I'm kidding that's my sub joke okay it says the cranes support the submarine above the water by chains attached to either end and here is a a bunch of stuff each chain runs through a pulled, sorry, 
Each chain runs through a pulley located at the top of, the cr of a crane. Lowering the, and submerging the submarine obviously requires great precision and skill. So I have to do a lift or move action, I believe is what that is, a pull push lift action, and it's a locked value. So I only get one card and I gotta get this. Okay, the chain do not break. The submarine is back in the water. Return the terrain card you are standing on and replace it with a 24 card. Discard this, okay? And if it if you fail, it says you hear a sudden clank at the top of one of the cranes. This is not a good sign. We need to make this. That means I know who's doing this one. First, we're going to put this over on the side. So I'm going to kind of pan the camera around just to show you kind of everything that's going on because this is really cool. So we've got over here, we've got Elliot Pendleton, who's got a life jacket, a rope, and a woven cord. We've managed to find this little island on this bigger island. And in there's a submarine. I can swim off this thing. There's some place down here where I was able to use some wood. There's a hole here that we found that was awesome. It's just It just blows my mind that this all connects so well. And over here we got Mary Kingsley. Don't forget she's still got her worm pet. She's made a walking stick, a club. I mean, this is just this is just so cool how this all works together. Okay, sorry, I'm just awestruck and impressed with this game. We are here. We have found a sub. Elliot Pendleton is going to lower the sub. He's going to take one card and he's going to hope for a star. He did not get a star. But never fear, I know that Elliot Pendleton had Yale graduate in his hand and it says as long as this effect, the following effect applies as long as you have this in your hand. It's in our hand. I can take negative one card during one of these and or, a, oh I should have just done the negative one card too, I didn't mean to pull this because I can get an auto success. But that's, that was dumb, that was my fault. If I lose by one card, I am so going to kick myself. All right, so we actually did make this action. I don't think I need rudimentary flint because I've already got that other card that makes fire. So because of my Yale graduate, I did get my one star. And like I said, dumb me, I should have just used the negative one as well. But we get the one star, so I will return the terrain card I'm standing on and replace it with a 24. Discard this. So I'm going to discard this into the past and grab it. Also, I will return this to grab a 24 card. It says, the submarine is in the water. Now set off as quickly as you can. You never know what could happen. Okay, it's just the train again. This is the same. Everything's the same except for this is a different number now and the sub is in the water. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. Okay, I'm still going to have Elliot Pendleton. He's going to go do this look, in, uh, search, examine. Pulling number 37, it says, stepping into the submarine, you see that the former occupants apparently took anything of use. Oh, well, that's great. All right. All right, entering the control room, you immediately check the remaining fuel. All you have to do is restart the engine and you'll be able to leave this blasted place. So we do have to do this together. So I am going to move Mary Kingsley onto here as well. Oh, it's going to be over here. So they're both going to go onto the sub. And let's see what it says to do. Take one card. It's a, what, take handle action. I don't have anything that helps that. But I don't even have successes. And then I go to card 21. The flag. The flag. The flag are these things. Oh, this is, okay, this is, is this how this works? Oh my gosh, I think this is. These cogwheels go with this. 
check it out. This symbol is here, it goes with that, and this symbol is here, it goes with that. So I add six to this card. So instead of 21, I'm gonna take 27? Or do I add both these together? That's kind of the cool thing. I think you can still check, and if it has that thumbs up symbol like I saw on that other card, I think I'll be right. We'll see how this goes. Okay, first I have to take a card though. I have to take a card. And I gotta examine the, no okay, in there, don't care right now, I'm too excited. Okay, we are going to, I'm gonna take card 21, add 12 to it, which puts us at 12 plus 21, not a mathematician, so it's gonna take a second, 33, right? 20, 33, 33, let's grab 33. So before reading the text on it, let's just check, 37, is that this number? So yeah, see, 37 matches up, I did do that right, awesome, okay. So I'm just gonna put these down. There's a boatload of text about the submarine. I hope it's yellow. All right. The submarine's engine rumble to life and it begins to steadily hum as it settles into gear. You pull away from the shore and leave the island without further delay. The control room is cramped and uncomfortable despite the noise from the engines and, you head, and the head spinning fuel smell you are all too happy to be the captain of the submarine, at least for a little while longer. And it's a temporary event, so it's going to go into the past. After navigating for about 20 minutes, you can suddenly make out the wild coast of the seventh continent. Oh, we weren't even on the seventh continent. What is this? Seventh continent island? Seventh island? All right. Luckily, the gauges indicate that you have just enough fuel to get there. So I take three zero three cards. Let's see here. Banish the two metal gear wheel cards that are under the satchel journal card. So we're going to do that first just because I can because they're sitting right in front of me. So here's the two. Banish them because I repaired the sub with them. Return all the cards on the board and in the past. Then banish a green 17 card. So... All right, after I'm done with this, it's gonna take me a second, I'm gonna do all that, okay. Put into play the active player chooses a 38 card if you head north, northwest, 132 if you head north, a 198 if you head northeast. Each player places their figure onto it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back up, we're gonna take 303 cards. The 303 cards, I got three of them. It's first one says, an event from your previous expedition comes to mind. Your team once spent the whole day making a stretcher to carry Emily Z. No matter, the, as a matter of fact, the closest trees were over three miles away from where he had broken his leg. That's not brave. When you craft an item, you will save time and energy if you have the right resources at hand instead of looking for the materials you need. Huh, okay, well, experience point. You remember the words whispered by Emily Z, the zoologist. Emily Z, the zoologist, what do you know? Z, Z, zoologist, that was a, a, that's pretty good. From the previous expedition, I only knew a few of the wild animals we have had to face so far, but the experience tends to show that when it goes, everything is fine. While when it goes, see, you might want to get ready to fight. The continent is home of formidable creatures, so no matter what you like best, fighting or stealth, make sure that you're always prepared for the worst during the exploration. Ah, I'm ready. I got my club of power. A moment from your previous expedition comes to mind. Zeho, your group's Shanae Shin Pathfinder, had an amazing ability to spot paths to, place, to places that were otherwise unreachable. Examine terrain cards carefully. In addition to potential hide, hidden numbers, they may contain helpful hints, such as animal tracks suggesting the presence of wild game in the area. All right. So we have taken our 303 cards. I banished the Metal Gear cards. I'm gonna return all these and banish a 17 card, and then we're gonna come back to deal with this. Okay, 
This looks totally different because everything's gone. It told me to banish this 17 card, so we're going to banish it. It was the one that had the original submarine up here, so we have to banish that card. I again just want to show you where we stand. We have Elliot Pendleton. He has that Yale graduate. Knowledge is power and forewarned is forearmed. He has a four point life jacket or four durability life jacket, a four durability rope and woven cord. Mary Kingsley has a pet worm, fire making kit. A torch and remember. She has a walking stick with four durability and a club and a spiky conch that has six. So that's where we stand. We got our satchel full of stuff. Now we have to decide where to go. And that is where we're going to start our next adventure. Thank you for watching this adventure. I'm really excited to keep on going. This is a really fun game. This is really neat. I love the art. I love the way this works. I love the action deck coming and going in and out. It's really great. I really like the satchel concept where you get lots of neat new things that you learn about the seventh continent. Though we just found out we weren't actually on the seventh continent, which <laughs> is kind of mind blowing in itself considering I spent all this time just wandering around an island that wasn't even the seventh continent. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like and subscribe. You can even turn on the notification button that'll tell you when more Seventh Continent videos come in. Please leave any comments or questions or just even if I got like a rule wrong or something that would help me make sure we get this right. I really want to play this correctly. I'd hate to not. And I wasn't exactly sure about the just breaking down an item, but I think you can do that. If I'm wrong, I apologize, but please tell me so I don't do it again in the future. With that being said, leave all those kind of things down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Where will this submarine take us? What does the true seventh continent look like? Well, in order to find out, you'll have to meet me at the table.